So in the last video, we talked about how incumbent businesses have certain advantages. They have these advantages because they have assets that are already in place. And from an economic perspective, they're already making money on what they have, their assets that they have, uh, a bakery or whatever that's already been around for years. They have the building, they're making money from that. They have their employees, they're making money from that. They add an incremental product and they just have to make money on that incremental product. They could tweak it and change it and that sort of thing. But you as a startup have to make money on everything. The good news is we also have advantages of a startup. There are things that we can do that help us that do not, are not available to the startup business. This is particularly true when some sort of change is disrupting the marketplace for, for that particular product and service. As I mentioned before in the last video, Amazon took advantage of the existing, the fact that the, the key players had to have lots of real estate and re locations and logistics and inventory and they were able to use an internet competence destroying change, the Schumpeter perspective, to become successful in that market. They go in, you go into a, a new area with new technology in a disruptive, using a disruptive technology or some disruptive trend, the learning curve that the other companies have doesn't necessarily work for them. In fact, it may work against them because they are totally used to making money on the way they've always made money in the past. And they're not necessarily flexible and ready to learn and trial and figure out how this new technology can make their business even more effective. More effective. The other problem they have is in order for them to be successful on this new platform, like the internet for Amazon, they would have to actually undermine the pricing of some of their stores and cannibalize is the term their own customers. They move their customers that are being currently purchased in stores with all that infrastructure and move them online, which can in many cases cause the stores to start to become less profitable and you could have an implosion. So they have a risk associated with moving into this new disruptive technology because they're trying to protect their assets. You can use that as Amazon has brilliantly done, use that to undermine a current structure. Netflix, likewise, and other streaming media did the same thing to Blockbuster. Using a new technology, something disruptive, to undermine the, what used to be these, tape, these videotape rental stores of Blockbuster. So that those started to become problematic because of the move online and the move to, to distribution of videotapes via mail. And essentially, Blockbuster would slow to react because they didn't want to cannibalize their own customers. One of the things that one wants to think about also is if you're selling a discrete product or service that isn't really integrated into this, uh, this network of assets that other companies have, something discrete like a video, like music, like a song, not necessarily a, a label, but you know, a song or a video or something on YouTube, um, or if you're making a product that can be sold standalone, some sort of a, um, of a new kind of uh, clothing, you know, a, a fashion or whatever. That's why those kinds of industries can, and you can sell it online even better, those kinds of industries can compete with the big players because it's a discrete product. You can just buy it, you can have it. It's independent, it doesn't depend on any other complementary assets for you to sell it, buy it, and make use of it. So these are another other advantages, and some that are mentioned here as well, some new drug. Many new companies, even though we have these huge pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, uh, Johnson & Johnson, a lot of the, the new drugs are actually made by small startups because they can create a new drug that has its benefits and gets it through the system and then they can use the complementary assets, the distribution channels, all the doctor relationships, the manufacturing and production processes of the big guys in either a partnership or they can actually sell their product, sell the rights to that product to another company that has all these assets. So another way to think about it is how can I make my product distinct that I can sell it without having to rely on other partners or other players? A lot of these things are actualized when what we're doing is using human beings and their brilliance, their experience, their intelligence, their creativity to create something new and different. 
a new kind of telev television show, a new kind of reality show. For example, individuals making something creative that they can then sell or put over the internet in a very discreet manner. Ultimately, they may be integrated into the rest of the, the system, but not initially, not at the beginning. So those are the kinds of things that you want to be thinking about as we go forward. Next video, we'll recap incumbents versus startups.